Earlier this month, practically every Japanese person on Earth celebrated the announcement that the 2020 Summer Olympic Games would be held in Tokyo. Sadie Shoda reports on one man who could be forgiven for not finding joy in the news. Kohei Jinno is a 79-year-old tobacconist in Tokyo who's been selling cigarettes at this family shop for nearly 50 years. As he opened for business this week, Kohei did so with a heavy heart, knowing that in about two years' time, his business will be forced to relocate. These are images of Kohei and his family standing proudly in front of their previous central Tokyo home, the demolition of which changed his life. Fate has not been kind to me. It might be great fortune for the nation, but having to leave this place fills me with sadness. I just feel that had it not been for the Olympics, my life would have been so different. The house in which Kohei grew up burned down during the Second World War. After that loss, the family moved to a home 20 meters away, where Kohei ran a tobacconist shop attached to the house. But just ahead of the 1964 Summer Games, that home was demolished to make way for an enlarged Olympic stadium, including facilities and a car park. Kohei then moved his family into a council housing complex, which included a retail area for his shop. And now that home is also going to be demolished, this time to make room for the 2020 Summer Games. It's like they're taking away the most precious thing I have after my family. Because of the Olympics, I'm going to lose the community I love so much, the friends that have kept me going so long. In the place, I'm getting uncertainty, loneliness and pain. Japan was the first Asian nation to host a Summer Olympics, and the current National Olympic Stadium holds a special place in most Japanese hearts. Its replacement will be a spaceship-like venue by Zaha Hadid, who designed the Aquatic Centre for the London 2012 Games. It's expected to have 80,000 seats. Tokyo. Tokyo touted a nearly £3 billion war chest for the Games and pledged the creation of 150,000 jobs. But Kohei, who turns 80 next month, has no idea when or where he will move. I wish they wouldn't have the Olympics in Tokyo again. I can bear getting evicted if it's just once in a century, but twice? It's ridiculous. So that was an example of one man who fears relocation. Well, our second guest of the night has been exploring the implications of the high-speed two-rail network in the UK and how that may have an effect on communities and the environment. So pleased to have with us. Toby Smith, thank you. Welcome Very to well. the program. Welcome. Absolutely. So now, listen, High you, Speed 2. Before we go into High Speed 2, what exactly is High Speed 2, Toby, in case people haven't heard about it? So High Speed 2, it's a um, massive infra infrastructure project in the UK where they're looking at putting a higher capacity and faster railway line from London to Birmingham. Sounds great. So is it a Can't case of that? sitting, clinging onto your seat with a seatbelt? Uh, Rumour is that the... The, the speed could be around 250 kilometres an hour, which would put it. I mean, look, at a I high travel. Speed. I travel on train two or three times a week from Glasgow to London to Manchester. For me, it's ideal. What's the problem with it? Uh, a lot of the controversy. Well, there's two main points of controversy. The first one is it cuts a new route across the country. So as a result, there's going to be a lot of people who are getting personally affected by their their homes or their businesses, and also it cuts through uh, some of Britain's um, outstanding natural spaces and landscapes. So you, you've well. actually been documenting the route, haven't you, um, or the proposed route as it is. How did you find that, and what actually inspired you to do that? Well, um, the inspiration is quite personal. I'm from one of the the. The goals of the railway is to try and solve the north-south divide, economic divide. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from the Midlands myself, and I personally relocated to London to follow my career as a photographer. So that's one of the personal um, relationships to it. And the second is, in personally, now running a business in the UK, I'm a, I'm a UK taxpayer, and this railway project is, look, is a significant proportion of the UK budget sure. uh, over a long period of time. So I'm interested in it from a kind of geographical point of view, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. landscape point of view, and also economic as well. And is it cutting through any golf courses? I've been, I'm looking at Gary and <laughs> Diane looking a bit uh, up there. I, I did see question. on the news recently, you, you probably helped me out a bit better with this, there's a, a very historic golf course that is, I think, believe, getting sliced right through the middle. Um, Not good. Yeah. Well, well, I'm really, talk, no. Talking about yeah. historic, I mean, yeah. we've got some pictures of some of the people that are affected. and some of the, This first one is a picture of Terry Harris, who's the owner of a garage specializing in V8 engines and classic car restorations. Mm. Now, where's Terry's garage along the route? Uh, there he is. 
Terry's garage is uh, it's quite close to Kilburn, so he's actually in a property that's adjacent to an existing railway line. But wow. it's, it's that's northwest London, Kilburn. Yeah, northwest mm. London. Oh, yeah, okay. but but uh, on plan, if the railway, if HS2 goes ahead, it'll need to widen the track in that area. And what about the photo of the tyre shop? Let's have a look at that because that's also preparing to have its property forcibly purchased by HS2. How many businesses have you come across that are actually affected by this? Well, quite a lot. I mean, uh, so I downloaded the. Um, the actual route of the railway onto mm. onto a GPS, you know, or you can do it on an iPhone by following the interactive map. Google Maps or whatever. Google Maps, yeah. exactly, yeah. Uh, and it enables me to actually walk the proposed plan. Sometimes that's existing railway, but other times it cuts, it straightens out corners and, and plows straight through residential areas or business areas. Yeah. Um, in other areas, it does tunnel underneath them. Yeah. Um, I've focused so far on the projects on London, mm -hmm. where the disruption is going to be the highest. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. the, it's the, well, let's look at population. some of the pictures that you've taken yourself, and if you just want to talk us through them. So here we go. This is the old the oak cafe, and you know, cafes are really part important part of society, right? Because this is where you socialise. This is where you get together with your friends and catch up, etc. Um, That's interesting because yeah. this sells English breakfast and Chinese cuisine. Yeah, it's How nice could you like demolish that. something like that? You know, that must be the flavour of Britain. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. for me, what, what's great about this project is is the railway line is kind of the narrator of a trip across Britain. In, in many ways, I'm, I'm obviously featuring mm. the controversy of HS2 as the backbone to the project, but it's an excuse to visit some quite off-the-map, very British corners. I, mean, I do remember Robbie Coltrane doing B Road Britain. Yeah, in his uh, exactly. old sports car, which is obviously fantastic. So I want to get some feedback from Gary and Diane. So Gary, Diane, what's, what are your views on this project and how, how do you think it will impact you guys in the golfing world? Well, for the golfing world, if they're going through a, a historic golf course, I'll have to look up which one that one is. Well, I suppose if it's one that's not got equal rights, you don't really mind, do you? <laughs> no, on the other side of it, it might take you to golf courses much quicker in Scotland. There you so, go. Or they cut it in half, it comes nine hole on one side and nine hole on the other. As you said, ladies that side, men that side. Yeah. Well, with well, HM Golf Course, you have to go across the tramway. Yeah, yeah. True, and that was pretty new. That's only what. what are you hoping to achieve by photographing uh, the, the crisis that's taking place with the HS2? Well, I think by walking the route pace by pace and seeing it, I mean, it stretches over 240 kilometres, what I'm proposing to do. And I think a lot of the reports in the media are quite often regurgitated or refed. So it's a, it's a chance to get really familiar and get quite intimate with the people, places and the landscape mm. along the way and connect all these stories. A, a way of kind of assessing the value or potentially what's at stake. What's interesting about what you did last night, in, in fact, was that you opened the debate with members of parliament in the UK. And um, what are you hoping to achieve by doing that? Well, so I opened a, a debate where it's a mixed bag. You had um, people that are work in the political sphere, you have people from the campaigning sphere, mm, and also mm. HS2 Limited, which are kind of promoting Pro this. HS2. No, very much so, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm trying to, rem I'm trying to rem have a, an unbiased view as I do the project, mm. but I certainly want it to be fuel for those debates and to, to act in that sphere as well. But I think and to remind that everyday people's lives are being affected. Yeah, but, yeah. but also explore maybe the North-South divide or what economic benefits could take place if some of these places if any. were connected better, if any, mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. what expenditure. How can people get involved in the debate or at least see your work you know, unfolding over the next few months? I think uh, one of the efficient ways is uh, following on Twitter. I'm going to be kind of tweeting updates as I go. Are you um, just Toby Smith? Uh, at Toby Smith Photo, all one okay, word. Lovely. All is words. that photo with an F or P-H? P-H-O-T-O. <laughs> yeah, so, I think yeah. he got his English at just, school. Just making, <laughs> just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best way. Yeah, and there's, right. there's, there's also um, hs2maps.com. It's a great right. resource to show okay. how this runs across the country. Really Fantastic. Well, stuff. thank you very much for Indeed. being with us this evening. Sadly. That's it. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for on tonight's programme.